Habia. Gee, but I'm glad to see a pal house tricks. What's new? Love thy neighbor. A great deal easier, life will be breezier if you love thy neighbor. Joan, how much longer are you going to be? I shall be a minute. And don't shout, you wake Mark up. Bill will be home soon. Hello. <laughs> well, what do you think? I like it. I'm not sure it suits me. Oh, I think it does. They're very fashionable. Why don't you keep on and see what Eddie says? I know what Eddie will say. Go raving mad. <laughs> well, I'd better get to the shops before they close. Keep the wig tonight, and if you don't like it, let me have it back tomorrow, OK? Bye. See you. <laughs> I'm in the wrong house. Sorry about me. Eddie? <laughs> Bloody Nora. <laughs> it's happened. What has? It's living next door, those knick-knocks. <laughs> You've caught something. It's affected your hair. It's a wig. Well, I'm reporting this to the race relations. Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> it's only a wig. Thank God for that. <laughs> Well, do you like it? No, I don't. Make you look like a gollywog. <laughs> Barbie says they're very fashionable. It might be fashionable for blackies, but you're white. It's all part of their plot. What plot? Black power. <laughs> I'm sorry, Eddie, but I fail to see what an Afro wig has got to do with black power. Well, I'll tell you. You see, they've realised they can't outnumber us, so they're trying to make us whites look like them. You do talk some rubbish at times. It is not rubbish. They're trying to undermine our society and create a climate where they could hold the balance of power. Thank you, Robin Day. <laughs> ah, you see, it's no good talking to you, is it? Where's the paper? In the other room. Uh, sugar, I'm back. <laughs> what the hell do you think you're doing? I don't know, but I like it. <laughs> Sorry, Joan, I thought you were Barbie. <laughs> Take your big black hands off my wife. I didn't know it was Joan from behind. She looked just like Barbie. Well, she does not like Barbie from the front. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm sorry. Barbie's just nipped down to the shops for a minute. She won't be long. Do you want to wait here? No, it bloody doesn't. <laughs> I'm talking to Bill. It's OK, Joan. I'll go and put on the kettle so Barbie can get a cup of tea when she get back, eh? Huh? Isn't that nice? Such a thoughtful man. He's a big black twit. <laughs> and take off that wig. But at least he's considerate. You never think of making me a cup of tea. If you want a cup of tea, I'll make a cup of tea. No, thanks. I've tasted your tea. It's horrible. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. Just to prove that Sambo is not the only reasonable fella, I shall get the dinner. Eddie, it's all right. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'm not incapable of fixing a meal. Eddie, sit down. You sit down. Just for once, your husband will wait upon you. Do you really mean that? <coughs> of course I do, love. Oh. <laughs> well, I might as well enjoy it. Yes. You just sit back, love, and I will get the dinner. Yes, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> now then, what do you fancy? Fish, chips and mushy peas? Or would you prefer a pie? Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> you want an 
fork. No, I'm not a fork. The sound of that one, I'm going to jizzle. <laughs> now, I'll have another pint. <clears throat> Make that two. Well, that lady. Hello, Eddie. Give me lads. I'll get them. Ah, oh, very kind of you. Cheers. There you are. Two pints coming up. Oh, ah, yes. cheers. This beer all right, Nobby. Looks a bit cloudy to me. Off. Let's have a taste of it. <laughs> <laughs> Tastes all right to me. Well, I'm glad you only had a taste. I can't help it. I've got a big mouth. You've got a big everything. <laughs> That's the point you owe me. Yeah, I wonder if Jack will come in tonight. Well, that all depends, Arthur, on what time he got back from his holiday. Yeah, it'd be nice to have him back, wouldn't it? So, yes, I've missed him. I love her. <laughs> Do you know, Eddie, if it wasn't for the night spent in this club, life wouldn't be worth living. You're quite right, Arthur. It's nice to get out for a couple of hours, release the tensions, and relax with a drink and good company. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look, fellas. Hi, Nobby. I spoke too soon. <laughs> what do you mean by that? You mind your own business. Why do you always have to be so ill-mannered, eh? Because you're an eggnog. And those whites have got to keep you in your place. And what place is that? Down, under us. We can't have you acting as though you're our equal. Oh, don't worry, Eddie. I definitely don't think of myself as your equal. Good. I'm very pleased to hear it. I'm way above, man. <laughs> <laughs> we were all created in God's image and likeness. Knickers. Hey, Nobby's right. Nobby's right. It was in the Bible. I don't care what it says in the Bible. He did not create us all in his image and likeness. I mean, for a start, God was a fella. So women are not created in his image and likeness, are they? You've got a point there, Eddie. Yes, yes. And look at him. He's black, so he's definitely not his image and likeness, is he? <laughs> look, nobody knows what colour God is. Of course they do. God was white. Uh, you can't prove that, you know. Like a bit. Look, his son was white. Mary was white. Joseph was white. So it stands a sense that God was white. I mean, all the angels were white. You've never seen a picture of a black angel, have you? No, 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 no. God was definitely white. It's the devil who was black. <laughs> I thought he might be. Mm. Of course he was. That's why they call worshiping the devil black magic and his services black masses. Yeah? And any minute now, you'll be giving us the old cobblers about us blacks descended from monkeys, eh? It is not old cobblers. It's perfectly true. <laughs> it can't be proven, Eddie, until the scientists discover the missing link. If there is a missing link. Of course there's a missing link. And one day, it'll turn up. Hello, I'm back. <laughs> hey, we were just you... talking about you, Jackal. Oh. <laughs> Did you enjoy your holiday? Oh, smashing. <laughs> well, what are you all having? <laughs> Pardon? I said, what are you all having? You're not actually going to dip in your pocket, are you, Jacko? Yes. Hey, like he had a touch of his son at Salton? He, he looks like Jacko, he's dressed like Jacko, but he's saying strange things like, what are you having? <laughs> Three pints, Nobby. One for yourself and I'll have half. I can't believe it. I'm a different man. Something happened to me on my holiday, it's changed my whole life. Why? Did you have a brain transplant? <laughs> I've fallen in love. <laughs> you what? I've fallen in love. With a girl? <laughs> of course it's with a girl. Well, you never know, Jacko, there's a lot of it about you, don't know, <laughs> Well, there's none of it here. Here you are, 72p. Keep the change. <laughs> Let me on, Jacko. There's no need to go raving mad. I don't care. Not anymore. Not now I've met Amy. <laughs> Will she like Jacko? Oh, she's lovely. Did you meet her in South End? Yes. She's working down there for the summer season. Oh, yeah. She's in the amusement arcade. She's not the bearded lady, is she? <laughs> <laughs> she's a bingo caller. Aye, aye. I bet she'd give you a full house now and then. <laughs> I met her on the very first day I was there. It was raining, so I went in this amusement arcade until it cleared up. And suddenly, I heard a voice calling. <laughs> Two fat ladies, 88. <laughs> I turned round and there she was. 
Stop it, Jacko. You're making me cry. <laughs> it's love story all over again. You know what they say, Jacko? These holiday romances, they never last. Oh, this one will. Oh, you know, it was the real thing. Because it is. I took her out to dinner on the very first day. <laughs> oh, it was romantic. We had brown Windsor soup, hamburger and chips, <laughs> and a double helping a spotted dick. <laughs> Very romantic. And then we went on the sands for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and did you get a bit? <laughs> it's not a girl like that. <coughs> we just sat and talked. And then I kissed her. And something came over me and I felt all cool and clammy. You, you were overcome with passion, Jacko. No, it was the sea. The tide had come in. I bet that cooled you down. Anyway, she took me back to her flat. And I did it. Pardon? I proposed to her. You proposed? You mean you asked her to marry her? Yes. And what's more, she accepted. She accepted? We're getting married on Monday. <coughs> Jacko, mm. there's a Miss Sparrow outside asking for you. It's Amy. Come in, Petal. Week back. Um, she's just putting Terry to bed. Sit on the man, she'll be back in a minute. How is the little darling? Mm, just like his father. Big, black and beautiful. <laughs> and modest with it. Hello, Joan. I brought it back. Eddie didn't like it? Not much. What did he say? I couldn't repeat it. Well, why not? Just leave all the bad language and the references to sambos and nignogs. If I leave that out, there's nothing left to tell. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. Morning. morning, Eddie. Well, to what do we owe this uh, unexpected honor of Big White Chief visiting humble black brother? Just watch it, otherwise Big White Chief will give humble black brother a kick up the kyber. <laughs> <laughs> Who's looking after Mark? You are when you get home. And where are you going? I'm going to the club to sort out Jacko. Have you and Jacko had a quarrel? No, no, no. I don't mean sort him out that way. I mean, I'm going to mark his card. What about? About that bird he's going around with, gone soft over. That bird happens to be his future bride. Not if I can help it. Why don't you want Jacko to marry her? Because they're not suited. Don't talk stupid. It is not stupid. You haven't seen her. If Jacko marries her, he'll be dead within a week. <laughs> oh, but what a lovely way to go, eh? You shouldn't interfere, Eddie. From what I've heard, Jack has really lost his heart. It's his marbles he's lost. <laughs> you did see him in the club last night. He was buying drinks for everybody. He spent more than three hours and he's spent since I've known him. Yeah, yeah. I must admit he was chucking his money about you. And not only that, he's put in a hotel until they're married and he's paid for that. I tell you, he's gone right round the twist. What does she look like? Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> she obviously thinks he's a soft touch. Why should she think that? Well, I mean, it's obvious, isn't it? I mean, you see, good-looking birds don't usually marry plain fellows with no personality. Oh, yes, they do. I married you. <laughs> do you mind? I'm trying to be serious. Has it ever occurred to you that they just might be in love? If she's in love with Jacko, I'll vote Tory. <laughs> <laughs> and just what do you think you're going to do about it? I'm going to do my duty. As Jacko's best friend, it's up to me to bring him to his senses. <laughs> to the most beautiful girl in the world. To the handsomest man. Oh, Amy. Oh, Jacko. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my missus used to be like that when we were courting. But after we'd been married a few years, she changed. She lost all that romance. Well, my agony, she lost it on the way back down the aisle. <laughs> Would you like another drink, my love? Oh, only if you're having one, Treasure. 
Would you like a large one? Oh, you are extravagant. Well, what's money? You only spend it. <laughs> Nobby, a large gin and tonic. I'll have half. And one for Arthur and one for yourself. Oh, and one for Bill and one for Eddie. Never mind the beer. Jacko, we'd like to speak to Amy, if you don't mind. <laughs> Less of the we. It was your idea, not mine, huh? You belt up. Jacko. I don't mind. She's here. Speak. In private. Why do you want to speak to her in private? Jacko, I just want to ask her a few questions. You see, don't you realise you know nothing about this young lady? Her background, where she comes from, nothing at all. I know all I need to know about Amy. And that is, we love each other. Well, it's not enough. Well, it's enough for me. It's all right, Treasure. I don't mind your friend asking me anything. I've nothing to hide. Well... <laughs> if you say so. Jacko, why don't you go outside for a few minutes? I won't be long. All right. Bye-bye, <laughs> darling. Bye-bye, sweetheart. <laughs> Oh, take care. And you. <laughs> All right, you're only going outside for a few minutes, not the other end of the world. Come on. Well, what do you want to ask me? Now, first of all, what about your parents? I, I haven't got any. Pardon? I'm an orphan. I never knew my parents. Oh, what a shame. I was an orphan, love. I was abandoned when I was a little baby. I'm not surprised. They probably couldn't find a cop big enough for you. <laughs> if she's an orphan, she's all right. She gets my approval, and I hope they'll both be very happy. There they are. Yeah, I second that. Look, let's drink to the happy couple, eh? Hang on, hang on. I haven't finished yet. Now then, have you got any attachments? You must be joking, Eddie. She's got the nicest attachment I've ever seen. I'm talking about impediments. Well, they don't look like impediments to me. <laughs> if you mean, am I married or divorced, the answer's no. Why haven't you married before? I've just never met the right man. And what makes you think that Jacko is the right man? Oh, he's so kind and generous and considerate. Are you sure we're talking about the same fella? He's got such a fine brain. Oh, I? Well, he's kept it well hidden, I tell you. Have you finished now? No, I haven't. I've got something else to say about this kind, generous and considerate man you want to marry. What's that? He's broke. He hasn't got a penny. So if you're marrying him for his money, you can think again. Money's got nothing to do with it. I'm marrying him because we love each other. Look, Jack... All right, all right, all right, Eddie, that's enough. Look, as far as we are concerned, baby, you have all our blessings. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And what about you? Do we have your blessing? Well... I hope I'm big enough to admit when I'm wrong. Jacko? Yes? She's all yours. Oh. And may I be the first to wish you both every happiness. Thank you, Eddie. The drinks are on me. Oh, no, thank you. Oh, my block. Are you all right? Oh, yes, Treasure. But I think I'll go back to the hotel and have a rest. I want to look my best when I walk down the aisle tomorrow. Oh, all right, then, Precious. I'll walk to the corner with you. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Romeo and Juliet, eh? More like Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> he fell on his feet with her. Yes, but by the time they get back from the honeymoon, he won't be able to stand on his feet. So <laughs> He'll go with the blind. <laughs> I know, I know. I was wrong and you were right. No, you were right and I was wrong. Pardon? Well, I take that was a bride-to-be on Jacko's arm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Hmm, Amy Sparrow. I went to school with her. Right little tear away she was. Well, maybe that's because she was an orphan. An orphan? She said she never knew her parents. The only reason she never knew them was because they was always in the nick. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> now, perhaps she didn't mention it because she was ashamed. Oh. Did she mention her husband in Dartmoor? Is she ashamed of him too? <laughs> she said she was never married. Obviously thinks Jacko's a soft touch. No, but, but, but Eddie told her that Jacko's got no money. She probably thinks Eddie's trying to put her off. Poor Jacko. Who's going to tell him? You're his best friend. Amy forgot a cigarette. Uh, Jacko. Mm? Eddie's got something to say to you. Yes, Eddie? Y yes, well, Jacko, you see, it it's like this, son. I it's all right, Eddie. I know what you're going to say. You do? Mm. You're going to apologise for mistrusting Amy. Am I? 
<laughs> no, no, Jacko, you see, uh, there's something else I, I want to tell you, and it's very important. And I have something to tell you, all of you. I don't blame you for mistrusting Amy. It's a mystery to me what she sees in me. But all I know is, I've never been so happy in all my life. It's like a miracle, a dream come true. And Eddie, I want you to be my best man. <laughs> now, what do you want to say to me? See you in the church tomorrow. <laughs> I still don't understand why you didn't tell him. How could I tell him? With him standing there looking like a cocker spaniel who's been promised a bone. <laughs> well, that's that. Have you told him? No, but I've told Amy. She's packed her bags and gone. What about Jacko? We can't have him standing at the church. It's all right, it's all right. I've told him. What did you say? Where did take him? I hope you're tactful. No, I told him the truth. Didn't you wrap it up a bit? Ah, uh, there was no way, Eddie. I just gave him the facts. Oh, what a hope. He doesn't do anything foolish. Ah, uh, don't worry, John. He'll get over it, you know. Yeah. Here, yeah, something terrible's happened. What is it? I've just seen Jacob. He said he's going to do away with himself and chuck himself in the river. Oh! oh. 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 <laughs> Hello, Jacko. What are you doing here? Well, I was going to kill myself, but I've decided not to. What about that? I suppose it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. Quite right. There's plenty more fish in the sea. Well, I'm not going fishing again for a while. Cheer up! Hey! That's my new cap! Don't worry. We'll go find a long twig and fish it out. Come on! There's no sign of him at all. You've never seen Jacko without his cap, have you? He's under that somewhere. Stand back. Stand back! <laughs> I'm coming, Jacko! <laughs> Have you got me cap? 